Hey guys, what's cracking? Crack Nation here, and I am incredibly excited to bring you guys a video that I've been putting a lot of work into recently. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Pokemon that have had their move pools boosted by the data mine information from the new DLC content coming out for Pokemon Sword and Shield. And I'm going to be giving you guys my personal ranking of which Pokemon I believe received the biggest buff. Keep in mind, these are my personal rankings, so when you inevitably disagree with me, feel free to flame me as hard as you want in the comment section below. And while you're at it, if you want to leave a like or subscribe to this channel to keep up to date with a lot of great competitive Pokemon content and analysis, I'd really appreciate it, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about this video. So, as you may know, Pokemon Sword and Shield did not have all the Pokemon in the National Decks included in the game. Instead, what Game Freak and Nintendo are doing is releasing DLC content called the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra into the game for purchase when you, where you can explore brand new areas and storylines while catching up on many old Pokemon and a few new ones along the way. Uh, regardless of my thoughts on Nintendo's business practices here, uh, it's cool that there are Pokemon being added back and with some crazy buffs to go along with that, it's a really exciting time to be a Pokemon fan and see what's in store. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into this list, guys. So coming in at number 10, we are going to have a uh, Pokemon that I had a hard time ranking on this list. I wasn't sure how high to put it, and I decided that number 10 will be the right spit spot. So barely squeaking in is going to be Glyscore. Glyscore is a Pokemon that has always been on the fringe of verse viability, and it definitely received a small buff with the removal of Hidden Power from the game, because Hidden Power Ice was obviously a move that it really, really feared. But in the new DLC content, it is receiving another buff that I think is going to make it a pretty big winner in the new DLC content for Pokemon Sword and Shield. And that's going to be the first one being Power Whip. So as you may know, Gliscor is a weak to water type, but not only that, Gliscor also is going to struggle with a lot of... Uh, water types that are going to be able to bulk to bulk through some attacks as you may know bulky water types being a really really good answer to glide score so now what does your glide score have to hit them how about an incredibly high base power move in power whip to hit them super effectively and be really really powerful so if you're running like a double dance in glide score or a swords dance glide score to stall break now you don't have to be afraid of your opponent's bulky water coming in every single time and threatening you out with the skull because now you've got that power whip in the back to do a lot of damage. Furthermore, another move it got is Psychic Fangs. Now this one's not quite as big a deal, but I think there are situations where Psychic Fangs can be useful. It could be useful against the Fighting type. Uh, now, Gliscor doesn't usually run fi Flying Stab, so Flying is super useful there. If you wanted to, you could run Acrobatics, but usually you want to run an item. So there's not usually a lot of great Flying Stabs, so Psychic Fangs could be a new go-to move for Gliscor when you're trying to hit opposing Fighting types. Uh, not to mention things like Mega Venusaur, for example, come to mind, although Earthquake's pretty good there. Psychic Fangs could be maybe a better option in a pinch. So, coming in at number 9, I might have this Pokemon a little low here, guys, I'm going to be honest. Uh, and this might be an unpopular opinion, but we're going to go to number 9, Zapdos. So, Zapdos is a Pokemon that has always been an OU Pokemon, or at least close. Sometimes it was UU, but it's a very, very, very strong Pokemon, no doubt. Uh, and got a few new toys here that we're going to talk about. So one of the big problems that Zapdos always had is that its flying stab was absolutely abysmal because it's on the physical side. It had to run Drill Peck, which is okay, but you don't want to run a physical Zapdos. You want to run a special Zapdos with that good special attack stat. And its only special stab moves were like, I think like, air cutter maybe it was just complete garbage so now it's got a couple new toys to work with one in the form of air slash obviously air slash is a really good move as a flying stab move we've seen it in some competitive play and then hurricane is the other really good option here so between these two moves you've got a slightly high better accuracy version obviously neither is perfect but air slash could be your go-to move with that flinch chance hurricane could be a more powerful move with that a chance to confuse as well you also have brave bird so if you are one of those absolute crazy people out there running physical zapdos you get a little bit of a better move than drill pack to do it finally weather ball is another kind of low-key one that kind of slipped under the radar but you need to consider because this makes think about this zapdos just got hurricane and weather ball which is going to be an incredibly powerful water move under rain and that makes also makes your hurricane perfect accurate per per perfect accuracy so you're going to have a incredibly powerful zapdos hitting with Thunderbolts or maybe a thunder think about this you're under rain right so you've got thunders perfect accuracy thunders perfect accuracy hurricanes and high base power water moves in weather ball for all the ground types that are going to try to switch in to your electric moves so all of a sudden your zapdos is going to be an insane rain pokemon so this all of a sudden zapdos becomes a potential go-to pokemon on offensive rain teams and you might see a lot on those style of teams in the future when the dlc is released 
So coming in at number 8 is a Pokemon that hasn't seen quite as much competitive play in the Smogon world, but you may have it in mind here, and that's going to be Blaziken. So Blaziken is not obviously in Smogon, but in a lot of draft formats, which you may be watching this video from, Blaziken without speed boost is unbanned, or if your league is crazy and you have a format where you're playing Blaziken with speed boost, it's got a lot of new toys to work with here, guys. So we're going to take a quick look at them. The first one is going to be U-Turn. That alone is insane. Any Pokemon that has Pivot instantly has a higher chance to be viable. U-turn alone can put a lot of Pokemon into competitive viability. Just that chance to switch out of attackers that threaten you, grab some momentum, grab some pressure along the way. Uh, it also got close combat, so it's now got a good, great at that go-to physical stab move. That is fantastic. Not to mention, it also got a go-to special stab move. I believe it had Focus Blast in the past, but Aura Sphere is going to be able to avoid all those Focus misses, and you're not going to be crying at the end of every game. So it's got access to some now, some really good go-to stab moves for both sides. So it's got Fighting Physical Stab and Fighting Special Stab, and it's also got U-Turn to have really, really good pivot access. So I feel like if you use Blaziken, if you're in a format where Blaziken is unbanned, Speed Boost or not, you're going to have a lot of success with these new moves that are going to give it a lot of viability. Not to mention that people forget Blaziken's a defogger. It's good, good special, good specially offensively, good physically offensively. It's really versatile, so don't sleep on this thing. It might be a Pokemon you want to pick up in your next draft league. Coming at number six here, we've got a group of Pokemon, so keep in mind, it's, it is kind of just one Pokemon, but it's a kind of a group here, and we're going to be talking about Lycanroc, and so Lycanroc, Lycanroc Day, Dusk, Midnight, whatever you want to call them, uh, Lycanrocs in general all got really big buffs, so they all pretty much got access to the same moves, I believe that one of them got a different move, but it wasn't, when I remember looking at the DLC moves, it wasn't a big deal, so these are the moves I want to talk about today, Play Rough is going to be a really, really amazing option on your Lycanroc, all those physically, maybe physically bulky fighting types, things like Conk out there are going to be very afraid of your play rough now keep in mind conquer gets mock punch my point being that when those physical fighting types maybe like a sock or a uh hard yama or something when those bulky fighting types come in you're going to have that crazy powerful play rough to go to you also have psychic fangs if that was the other direction you wanted to go if there's a grass poison type maybe on the field or those fighting types again you've got really good options to hit them now between play rough and psychic fangs you've got a lot of great great tools so just keep that in mind, guys. This this is some huge buffs to Lycanroc. It could be really, really viable in whatever format you're playing. And the, finally, you get close combat. So you get a move to potentially hit those Steel types that were pretty pesky. Because if you keep, remember, Lycanroc doesn't actually get Earthquake. It only gets, I believe it's... Uh, is it Drill Run? It gets an 80 base. I think it's Drill Run. It does not get Earthquake. So if you needed a move to hit Steel types that resist your Rock Stab, you now have Close Combat. And keep in mind on Lycanroc Dusk, Lycanroc Dusk has Tough Claws. So all three of these moves get a Tough Claws boost off Lycanroc Dusk. So honestly, I'm kind of surprised I didn't put this higher up on the list. It usually could have been. It's just because Lycanroc in general isn't necessarily known as the most threatening Pokemon in the game. Uh, but overall, I consider Lycanroc maybe easily could have been higher on this list. This was a tough call. But it definitely, these Pokemon received a massive buff, especially Lycanroc Dusk becomes instantly more threatening in all formats. So coming at number six, guys, here, we're getting to some spicy Pokemon here. We're getting a little higher on this list. We're going to be looking at Deancey. And Deancey got some fun new toys for sure. Uh, that are going to make it very viable. And when we're talking about Deancey, keep in mind, we're also talking about Mega Deancey, guys. So keep that in mind here. National Dex formats, Play Rough is the first move that I got. And Play Rough is huge because your physical Deancey is now a real thing. The problem with Deancey is it has this amazing move in Diamond Storm with that high rock. With It's got a high base attack stat, high base power rock move but it's physical, and it's got that chance to boost your defense, 50% chance to double your defense every time you use it. That is insane, but the problem was you always wanted to run Moonblast, because that's a really great move too, and you can never run both while being invested in both, really. You had to be a mixed set at best. So that was a really tough situation, and so now Deancey gets play rough, and all of a sudden physical Deancey might be the go-to. Now keep in mind, you still don't get a great move to hit uh, opposing Steel types, which are a big problem for Dancy on the physical side. So if it got Earthquake, you'd be a little happier, right? But unfortunately, unfortunately, you don't. But you still could run Earth Power. You could support it with something like a Magnezone. You could run those Steel Trappers, and you still could find ways to beat those Pokemon. So Play Rock is going to be a huge buff to physical Dancy, especially physical Mega Dancy. It's also got Mystical Fire, which is really cool, really amazing. As another move to potentially hit those Steel types and those Grass types that you might fear. 
Uh, it's got Draining Kiss on regular Deancey and Mega Deancey. That could be a really potentially viable move. Uh, Deancey has really good bulk, but it has awful HP, and all of its great bulk comes from its defense stats, which makes a move like Draining Kiss potentially really viable because Draining Kiss, when it gives you back 50% of the damage you dealt as recovery, your HP stats really low. So it's similar to way so that the Rotom forms love pain split because their HP stats are so low, or Dusclops loves pain split because the HP stat is so low. Draining Kiss could be very viable on your Deanseys out there. So keep that in mind, guys. It's also got body press. And so body press is huge on a Pokemon like regular Deancey because it can hit those steel types. So let's say you're running a physically defensive regular Deancey, 150 base, 150 base defense, guys. That is very physically bulky. And then you've got a move that wind body press that uses that physical defense stat as an offensive stat and all of a sudden you are launching massively powered body presses out against the world and guys that is going to be really effective against dealing with those steel types so Dancy, maybe again a pokemon that could have easily been higher up in this list which just shows you how crazy some of these buffs to all these pokemon higher up are guys coming in at number five this is maybe a weird choice but this pokemon got an insane buff and it did not take much let me tell you and that is alakazam and mega alakazam alakazam did not get a whole lot guys it really only got one move but this move is a unbelievably massive buff that makes it so insane so so insane so much more powerful so i think you're gonna have to have to try this in competitive games and might get banned from a lot of formats and that is nasty plot alakazam has always had to run calm mind when it wants to set up and guess what it no longer has to do it no longer has to run calm mind it can just double its special attack which was already usually fantastic it's already got that great ability in magic guard or even more threateningly if you're running mega alakazam you've got that insane speed stat and insane special attack stat and you can just go you can just nasty plot up and go and just destroy lives if the pokemon isn't a dark type it's not taking psychics for anything so it could be potentially really, really scary. It also got stored power. I don't think that matters quite as much. I just wanted to tell you guys that it got it because it could be maybe a consideration if you were thinking about it. But it's kind of crazy how good Nasty Plot is on Alakazam that it got to, I put it at my number five spot and all it got was really just one move that was the difference maker. But on a Pokemon like Mega Alakazam or even regular Zam with a Life Orb and Magic Guard, for example, Nasty Plot is just going to propel you to so many wins for sure. And I definitely think you guys should try this out when the DLC expansions hit. So coming in at number three, or so number four, we've got two Pokemon here. And that is Latios and Latias. These guys got a pretty nice buff, I have to say. Latias got Dragon Dance. I just want to put that up there. I did not put this on this list, but Latias got Dragon Dance. Not a very viable set. Latios barely runs Dragon Dance, if ever, and Latios is definitely even worse at it, so I don't think it's very viable. The first move, though, Mystical Fire, and also, to be honest, Aura Sphere. Both of these moves allow them to hit those very, very pesky Steel types that walled them. Those Dark types now fear Aura Sphere, so Aura Sphere is honestly an amazing move for this Pokemon. It gets good fighting coverage, so now you can run, because a lot of times what was crazy in previous generations is how often Latios and Latias wanted to run Hidden Power Fighting, and they couldn't because it lowered their speed stat by one because of the, how the IVs work in old generation. So now you can run an even more powerful move in Aura Sphere, and then with your Psychic and your Dragon coverage, I can easily imagine like a Specs Latios or a Life Orb Latios with Aura Sphere, Draco Meteor, Psy Shock, and then like Roost or Defog, whatever move you need in that last spot. It gets Surf, Thunderbolt, these, these moves alone just round out this Pokemon's coverage so fantastically, guys. And it's going to be really, really powerful. It also got Air Slash, which is a potentially really nice move for it. It hits Grass types if you weren't hitting them already. Uh, it's just really, really useful, I think. Another nice tech move if you need it. Overall, the Aura Sphere, Mystical Fire, those two moves are going to be huge for this. Things like Ferrothorn, goodbye. You can never wall me again. Guys, coming at number three, the Pokemon that has been roasted on this channel before, but it got a big buff, on, and so that is going to be Mega Lopunny. And no regular Lopunny, mm, the buff is not as big because this Pokemon, Mega Lopunny, is way better than regular Lopunny. So we're going to be talking about Mega today, guys. So Mega Lopunny is a Pokemon that has been roasted on this channel before. I was never a big proponent of the neutral stabs. And with the start of Generation 8, losing return was a huge nerf to this Pokemon. So overall, it was in a rough spot, guys, at the start of this generation. It was in a rough, rough spot. I'm going to be honest with you. But... It got close combat, so no longer do you have to worry about your Mega Lopunny missing high jump kicks. The days of Mega Lopunny missing high jump kicks have officially ended, and it is now going to be running close combat and claiming lives in the process. No longer is Protect a good way to beat Mega Lopunny. You now have to be ready for it. Not only that, but it also...
also got U-Turn. U-Turn is another potentially insane move on this Pokemon. If let's say your Pokemon, your opponent has that bulky Psychic that switches in, right? That was always known as the best answer to a Megalopony is a physically defensive Psychic type. Well, guess what? Now you're going to click a super effective U-Turn, get on out of there, hightail it out of there, and bring in your next attacker. You're going to be claiming lives, and that is going to be very, very hard for your opponent to deal with. Potentially insane. Guys, I love U-Turn on this Pokemon. It is going to be so, so strong. Just think about that. It hitting those Psychic types that switch in super effectively with a powerful move, and then you're also gaining momentum and initiative. Just unbelievably powerful, and it had to be number three on the spot. Easily could have been number two, maybe even number one. Uh, definitely a huge buff. Finally got play rough, and that's honestly maybe not the biggest deal in the world. Uh, usually you're gonna want to run U-turn, close combat, uh, maybe like a normal stab, maybe fake out something like that. Ice punch could be an option, but play rough is now another tech move you could run to hit those dragon types a little bit harder than something like ice punch could. So you've got a really really cool new tech move as well. So overall, Megalopony easily could have been high in this list, guys. I had a hard time putting it this low. Coming in at number two, guys, we are getting up on this list. And at number two, we have Tapu Koko. And so Tapu Koko got some fun new toys. The big problem with Tapu Koko in Generation 7, I mean, the, when I say the big problem, keep in mind, it was already one of the best Pokemon in the generation in all formats. And the problem was partially that it could only ever be special. Its physical Tapu Koko sets were just kind of lackluster because it had to run Wild Charge and then which is not a great move in general, but then it also had no physical fairy moves, really awful physical coverage. It only really got Brave Bird. But you know what it got? Now it got close combat. So it's got some fun toys. Now it's got that move to break through those steel types that are going to try to come into you. No longer will you be walled by the fair thorns of the world. No way, Jose. You've also got Play Rough, dude. Play Rough is going to be another insane move on this thing. It's so, so needed. And these two moves together will catapult the, perhaps now the new best Tapu Koko set is now Physical Koko. That is very, very possible. Not to, not to mention that these moves are going to have to carry and make up some of the slack because the terrain nerf that it got, as you may or may not know, uh, all the terrains got a slight nerf. And they now do 1.3 times boost instead of 1.5 times boost. Uh, finally, another consideration I put here is Stored Power. Uh, not a very cool move you're going to see very often, but if you are one of those cool people who wants to run maybe in a niche set, I think Electric Seed, Calm Mind, Tapu Koko can catch people off guard. You can run Electric Seed, Calm Mind, Roost, Thunderbolt, and another attack, and that's a really good set, honestly. And on that set, if that extra attack wanted to be Stored Power, I think that could be a very good option now. Uh, so just something I wanted to talk to you guys about Electric Seed, Tapu Koko could be a viable Stored Power user. Guys, we've got a couple honorable mentions I want to go over here. These Pokemon easily could have made this list, uh, but unfortunately they did not. The first one is going to be Tornado Stereo that I'm going to talk about right here. Torn T. It got nasty plot. Could have easily made it over something like Gliscor, I think. We really had to wrestle with that decision. Uh, I just thought in the end, Torn T, you know, nasty plot is obviously a substantial buff on it, but it is a Pokemon that likes to switch in and out. It's a pivot more than anything else. It's its primary role. Uh, now it can also be a sweeper, obviously, so... It's threatening as a whole hell. It easily could have made this list. But, um, yeah, it's just that because it's when you click Nasty Plot with Torn T, uh, you're basically saying you don't want to make full use of Regenerator because why would you switch out if you're setting up every single time you bring it in? So, I want, I kept left it off this list, but it definitely is number 11, if not making it onto this list. Raikou got Scald, which is a really big buff for it because now it gets a tool to hit those ground types really, really hard. Um, so, you get... You have your electric stab, right? That's really powerful. And then you've got a scald. For some reason, get scald. I can't even explain why it gets it to hit those. Also, Agron, Mega Agron, and a lot of other Pokemon. Things like Regirock, Registeel, I'm going to include here. Those are all Pokemon that got body press. So all these Pokemon with crazy defensive stats got body press. And something like Mega Agron clicking body press is absolutely nuts, dude. So keep that in mind. That's going to be another really insane Pokemon. The Lake Trio easily could have made it onto this list. The Lake Trio of Mesprit, Uxie, and Azov. All got stuff like Play Rough. It's really, really nice for them. Nasty Plot, stuff like that. So just a lot of very viable options there. And a lot of Pokemon that in that 11 to 15 range on this list that unfortunately just could not make it. But uh, one Pokemon is at number one. So let's find out what that is. So guys, what is number one? The biggest winner of the DLC expansions. And in my opinion, the biggest benefiter of the new expansion is going to be Tapu Bulu. This Pokemon made out like an absolute bandit. Now, keep in mind, I'm not saying Tapu Bulu is the best Pokemon on this list. I think that easily could, could go to something like Mega Lopunny or Alakazam, honestly. Probably Alakazam more than anything is the strongest Pokemon post nerfs. But I think from where it started to where it ended, Tapu Bulu had the biggest jump in viability. 
again, it was already a good Pokemon, but now it's got Play Rough. It's got that physical move. It was always looking for that physical fairy move. Now it can click those insanely powerful grass moves, but then when it's got needs the physical fairy move, it's got that in the back. So no longer can gra Dragon types effectively wall your Tapu Bulu. Play Rough is going to annihilate them. Well, you may ask yourself though, but the problem is you're running grass and fairy stab. How are you going to hit steel types? Don't worry, you've got close combat. So you're going to be annihilating those steel types that try to come into you. you they don't, you don't fear them at all. All of a sudden, Tapu Bulu can eat steel types for breakfast, but it doesn't stop there. The fun doesn't stop. It also has high horsepower, which, if you don't realize, is Earthquake without the nerf from Grassy Terrain. It, it's a 95 base power ground move, but unlike Earthquake, which Earthquake, if you didn't realize, is halved in power under Grassy Terrain. Earthquake is not a move you want to use on something like Tapu Bulu, but it gets high horsepower, which is a 95 base power ground move. So all of a sudden you're hitting those steel types incredibly hard with those powerful ground moves. It's really, really nice. Finally, if it was, if that was enough, it also got Darkest Lariat. Just another really good dark move, and you're going to really enjoy using this Pokemon, guys. I think this is going to be the Pokemon that tops my list. It's going to be just an insane Pokemon of this generation. I really think so. Again, it might not be the strongest on this list, but it's really, really insane and just benefited maybe i think in my opinion more than any other pokemon on this list guys let me know what you thought of this video i put a lot of work into it i put a lot of time and i really thought about these decisions really carefully i know you're going to disagree so feel free to roast me alive in the comment section below let me know what you think if you enjoyed this video or stuff like this make sure to leave a comment in the section below and let me know what you thought like subscribe guys join our discord channel to see a lot of other competitive pokemon discussion and content and until next time i will see you guys later Kraken nation out